Hello, today I'm going to walk you through my process of troubleshooting SPS problems. Hello and welcome back everybody to the Bio Reef. Okay, my SPS still looked like crap and I thought this might actually be a good opportunity to talk to you about something that uh, I don't usually talk to you about is how to troubleshoot things when uh, when things go south, right? When, when your tank is not looking that great, how to get it back on track. So uh, you're looking at pictures of my corals here. You'll see that I'm still having these issues with uh, burn tips and, and algae growing on the tips of my SPS. Uh, this started a few weeks ago after I had a power outage, but you know, I, I think maybe the power outage was partially, partially responsible, but there might be some other factors in play. But anyway, I, I thought this might be a good opportunity to kind of walk you through my process and, and, and hopefully uh, you might learn from, uh, from my way of kind of thinking about uh, troubleshooting these problems. So uh, if we could just step back and I mean, we, we've heard it before, what are the key to success to SPS? And you know you have to get the lights, you have to get the flow, uh, water chemistry, and you have to kind of watch out for pets. Uh, sorry, pests, not pets. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my cat is not responsible for my SDN problems. So uh, I started out by ruling out uh, pests. I, I did add some new corals, and and they might have brought in some nasties. Uh, I did uh, take a lot of the affected corals and look them carefully under the microscope. And, you know, there, there was no obvious signs of like red bugs or acropora eating flatworms. Uh, it doesn't seem to actually be anything munching. And I did spend a good amount of time just looking at how the fish uh, interact with my SPS in, in case maybe, uh, you know, I did remove my one spot fox flame thinking that he was picking at the tips and, and that was leading to the issues. Uh, I did see some of the tanks trying to clean the algae, but it, but it was very obvious they were only eating things, uh, picking on tips that had already essentially died and are covered with algae. So uh, just by ob observing the corals and observing the tank, I ruled out the issue of pests. Now light, uh, I think that's if you have a par meter, it's kind of pretty easy to figure out whether you're in the right range. And I went ahead and just validated that my corals were getting a reasonable amount of light, uh, about 250 to 300 uh, to 350 par across my tank. So I'm, I'm able to kind of cross off uh, light uh, as a, pos a possible culprit. Uh, then I focused on my flow. Uh, I was running around 30 times uh, the turnover rate so I could figure out what the power output on my pumps is how much gallons per hour they're putting combined and divide that over my uh, tank volume, the display volume. And I was about thir 30 and you know, that maybe is a little bit low again, perhaps not like a major culprit, but I did went ahead and up the flow a little bit. So now my MP 40s are putting at around uh, 50 times the tank volume, the display volume. So after double checking my water flow and my lights and uh, whether I have pests or not, I then turn my attention into water chemistry. And the first thing I do is to just double check that my tank is within kind of a reasonable uh, set of parameters. So that involves validating my alkalinity, calcium and magnesium uh, reading that I get from the Trident with a second, uh, with HANA checkers essentially, uh, just to make sure that uh, you know my values are really okay. Uh, so I like to keep my alkalinity around like 8.5 calcium anywhere between 400 to 450 and magnesium around 1350 uh, and all of these parameters checked out uh, my nitrates again uh, were a little bit low so I, I have to up my ca uh, potassium nitrate dosing a little bit I like to uh, I, when I say they were a little bit low they bottomed out again so I was uh, getting zero on the HANA checker and pH and salinity all checked out so after kind of validating the core parameters then you want to look at the, the other things that you can't regularly test with your, your uh, micronutrients and uh, your trace elements and, and uh, so on so for that you actually have to go out and uh, get some icp testing so i sent three different icp tests uh, to uh, fauna moraine to get a sense of what's happening to my system 
So the first test that I did was on my RODI system. And so this is just to kind of let me know if there's any contaminants in the fresh water that I use to uh, make my salt water. For the most part, my RODI, RODI system is pretty clean. So here is uh, all of these different chemicals that you test for and uh, NA is uh, not, uh, not detected. Detected a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of sulfur, no big deal, a tiny bit of iodine. That's actually, you know, a good thing. Uh, everything else is kind of missing except for a little bit of silicone. Uh, not sure whether I need to maybe change my uh, filter on uh, or my carbon block or something, uh, but it's a small amount. Uh, everything else is essentially uh, kind of uh, missing uh, with the exception of, of a few kind of trace elements that you actually want to have in your system. So, you know, that's not a big deal. Uh, the potentially hazardous uh, substances here, you know, these are the contaminants, the heavy metals, they're all missing. So uh, that was the first bit of good news is my, uh, uh, my uh, RODI system is in good shape. All right, the second test that I sent was actually my salt water mix. So I, saw, I mixed my salt in a, a 50 gallon brute and I wanted to just see whether there's something coming in in the salt mix or whether maybe the pump that I'm using to mix the salt water is leaching some nasty chemicals or something. And uh, just for your information, I normally use uh, reef crystals, but when I set up my tank, I use the Red Sea, the blue bucket. And that's because the parameters there are kind of close to what I ran on my Red Sea reefer. So again, uh, for the most part, nothing kind of jumped at me here. Uh, you know, it's got all of the major elements, uh, the macronutrients that there is no, you know, phosphorus or anything. The silicone that you see here, remember my RODI system had uh, 0.08 silicone, so that's probably uh, carried over into my uh, my uh, salt water mix. Uh, it does have, you know, a fairly decent amount of trace elements. Uh, in terms of kind of the nasties, uh, there was a little bit of lithium, but it was within the kind of the acceptable range. Uh, it was a little bit high in barium. Uh, again, not sure whether that could lead to any problems. Uh, uh, what I like here uh, with uh, Fauna Marine uh, uh, ICP test is it actually gives you kind of recommendations of, of what to do. Uh, so they're recommending that I do a water change here to reduce this levels a little bit. Uh, there is a little bit of uh, aluminum and, and that's going to become important later. It's not really like outside of the typical range uh, now. But uh, for some reason, the Red Sea salt was, the blue salt was a little bit enriched in aluminum. Uh, all of the other baddies have essentially uh, non-detected. So I'm going to go to the actual, the final test, which is uh, the test done on my water box 180. Uh, okay, so in terms of what I'm seeing, in terms of the major elements, everything is in the good within range uh, my iodine is really depleted so they actually they recommend that I up my iodine and uh, that's something uh, I've never had issues with iodine before using reef crystals so I wonder whether uh, the red sea blue bucket that I started uh, my uh, water boxes is a little bit and it doesn't have as much iodine as uh, as needed or, or maybe my corals are just uh, corals and macroalgae are kind of consuming it at, at too high of a rate but it's clearly something that I want to kind of make an effort of dosing a little bit to see if I could bring these levels up. Uh, my phosphorus uh, with within kind of range, silicone, you're still seeing that 0.08 that is coming directly from my ROEDI system. So again, I'm not too concerned because it's within within the reference range, but uh, it, it's, it, it's not, a, I don't think that level is a problem. Okay, for physiologically relevant trace elements, again, we're seeing this pattern of uh, some dep uh, depletion in, in important trace elements. Manganese, iron, chrome, cobalt. The iron is probably from my uh, uh, ketomorpha, uh, so I'll definitely need to dose a little bit of that. Uh, again, I, I don't really think, like, I don't think huge depletions or, or, or any depletion of trace elements could lead to the huge problems that I'm seeing with my corals. Uh, you know, I think maybe these are probably affecting the color a little bit, but they're not causing the, the burn tips and, and, and some of the coral, uh, the coral tissue death that, that I'm, necrosis that I'm seeing. So here are kind of the, the, the biggies is uh, lithium uh, is a little bit larger than usual. 
uh, barium is uh, you know within range but aluminum is really uh, kind of outside the range so I think the ICP information was a little bit helpful in, in identifying a few kind of problematic areas so it's clearly that I'm a little bit behind on some of my trace elements and there is some contamination of metal especially aluminum uh, I have no idea where the aluminum is coming from I did install a, a do-it-yourself Red Sea Reefer lid on my tank which is made of aluminum but I, I can't really you know see a lot of uh, water splashing on it and then falling back in the tank uh, but nevertheless you know it's still some kind of um, the ICP test did give me a few actionable items so what I'm planning to do going forward is uh, I, I now I'm going to focus on re uh, reducing the amount of aluminum as well as upping some of uh, my trace elements by doing uh, several large uh, water changes uh, so I'm I'm reverting back to uh, the reef crystals, which uh, has you know served me well in the past with the Red Sea Reefer 250. It typically has a, I mean a pretty decent profile of uh, trace elements. So uh, I'm just gonna do maybe I would say like a 50% water change, but spread over a period of a week and a half, uh, and that should bring the aluminum levels down and it should restore some of my trace elements uh, and I'm also going to try to kind of do my best at keeping things stable going forward again we talked about acceptable ranges of parameters but I think really a big part of success with SPS is just kind of stability of the system so I'm gonna and and uh, the storm really like <laughs> torpedoed the, uh, the stability of my tank for so many different parameters so I'm hoping with the water changes and the focus on stability of my core parameters, uh, things will kind of slowly improve. Uh, and I, I think I'm already starting to see signs of improvements, although it's a little bit too early to tell. All right, uh, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you uh, uh, have any comments or opinions or thoughts about uh, the parameters that you saw or anything else that I might want to consider doing, please let me know. Uh, before I sign off, I just want to quickly share this picture. Uh, so, uh, you know, I love living in Toronto and there are many awesome things uh, that I love about the city. Uh, one of them is uh, the really awesome uh, reef stores and, and reefing people around. So uh, I had quickly stopped uh, at the Reef Paradise by Demo here uh, to pick up some Kalkwasser and some Trident reagents. And who else did I see other than uh, Dimitri from uh, Treasure Reef? Uh, so Dimitri uh, is another local reefer in, in my area and he has a YouTube channel also experiencing some weird issues with uh, SPS uh, if you haven't already done so please give his uh, channel a look uh, it's uh, Treasure, uh, Treasure Reef and uh, it's uh, Dimitri okay guys uh, have a good one enjoy your reefs and I'll see you later